Okay, so we're going to pick up from where we left off with integration by parts in the classroom. Just to recall, um, we're going to use integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral of v du. Where when we're choosing u, we want to choose u to be something that differentiates easily and dv to be something that integrates easily. So when you're looking at your integral, you have to decide what is u and what is v. I also want you to remember that this is the product rule for integration. In choosing u, you want to use the mnemonic ILATE to help you remember which value to choose for u. Um, we want to start by looking at inverse trig, then look to see if you have any logs, if there's any algebraic, if there's any trig or exponential. Remember, this is just a... Um, it's, it's not a hard, fast rule. It's just a guideline to help you choose U and V. Um, it really doesn't matter which one you choose for U or V, uh, but you do want to choose the, those, guide, those guidelines just to make sure it's easy. So let's do this problem. It is on page two of your notes. I think it's at the top right. Um, it's the first problem on the top right. So the first thing we want to do is, if you notice, e to the x and cosine x, they both differentiate and integrate easily and continuously. So it really doesn't matter which one we choose for u or which one we choose for dv. I'm going to choose u is equal to e to the x, just because I can. So if I let u equal to e to the x, then that means that dv is equal to cosine x. Then I'm going to differentiate e to the x and integrate cosine x. Now, plugging that into our formula, formula gives us e to the x sine x minus sine x e to the x. Notice that I'm going to have to use integration by parts again on the integral of sine x e to the x. So using integration by parts again, I'm going to continue to let u equal to e to the x and du equal to e to the x, of course, and dv equal sine x. Now I'm going to replace or substitute back in what I have. Let's clean this up with our, um, our negatives. So I want you to notice that on the outside of this parenthesis here, this parenthesis cover both of these, so I have to distribute this negative to everything. So when I do that, that becomes... Now, notice that this is the same as what we started with. This is the same as this. So because the two are the same, I'm going to do some little inventive math here. And I'm going to set what I started, what I began with, equal to all of this. Now, because I've done that, I now can move all of the integrals to the other side. So if I add this integral to the other side, I get 2 integral e to the x cosine dx over here. Now, to solve for this integral, because that's my goal to solve for this integral, I'm simply going to divide everything by 2. This is my final answer. Sorry, I didn't mean to go through that so quickly. Okay? So, let's try another example. Okay, so we're just using integration by parts. And we want to decide what is the value of u. So if I let u equal to x, using I late, since this is my algebraic term, and then dv equals to sine x. So du is equal to dx, and v is the integral of sine x, which is negative cosine x. So I have uv, negative cosine x. I'm going to write this x out here because that will be confusing. Negative x cosine x minus the integral of v. Now this negative and this negative is going to make that positive. Minus the integral of negative of um, v dx du. Now, I'm just going to simply integrate that, and the integral of cosine x 
is sine x, and we are done. Now, when we look at this problem, we may want to try to do an integration by parts. But before we begin integrating, we always have to try to do the simplest solution. Those of you who had me last semester are familiar with the term think horses, not zebras. We always want to try the simplest solution. So when I look at this, I think, well, maybe I could use u substitution. Because if I let u equal to the natural log of x, then du is equal to 1 over x dx which we have in our original problem. So this is a simple U substitution problem. Integrating that, I get 1 third U cubed plus C. Substituting, I get 1 third the natural log of X quantity cubed plus C. Think horse is not zero. You always want to try U substitution in a simpler form before going to integration by parts. Okay? So here's our, our next, another example. Um, I want to look at U substitution. If I let U equal to the square root of X, then DU is equal to 1 over 2 square root of X, which is not in my problem. So I can't use a U substitution here. And I'm going to have to use integration by parts. What I have to remember is that this is not a multiplication. This is a composition of a function. So I'm going to have to let u equal to this entire thing. And then dv, therefore, would simply equal to dx. So taking the derivative of u, I have to use chain rule. So I take the derivative of the inner function, which is 1 over 2 square root of x times the derivative of the outer function, which is simply 1 over the square root of x. And then integrating v, I get v is equal to x. I can simplify this. I can write this as 1 over 2. What's the square root of x times the square root of x? It's just x. So now rewriting this, I get uv, so I get x, natural log square root of x, minus the integral of v, which is x, du, and du is 1 over 2 square root of x. So of course, that simplifies to the integral of negative 1 half dx. Integrating that is simply minus 1 half x plus C, and that's my answer. Okay? Coming over here, I try U substitution. It doesn't really work. I can't simplify, so it looks like I'm going to have to use integration by parts. Now, notice that this is not a multiplication. It's division. But we can write any division problem as multiplication. Someone asked that question after class today, and we can take any division problem and just write it as a multiplication problem. Okay? So when we've done that, uh, we can now let u equal to 2x. So du is equal to 2. And then we can let dv equal to e to the negative x. So v is equal negative e to the negative x. Multiplying those two together, I get 2x negative e to the negative x minus the integral of v. So this negative times this negative, I'm going to go ahead and make that positive, e to the negative x times 2. Integrating this, I get 2x e to the negative 2x e to the negative x. Integrating that will give me a minus as well, so I get 2e to the negative x plus c. Okay? So, now we're going to move on to a shortcut method called tabular integration. Tabular integration is cool when you have one of the terms differentiates to zero, and the other one is easy to integrate. Now, I have to caution you, this only works if one of the terms differenti differentiates to zero in several steps. If it does not differentiate to zero, you cannot use the tab method. And the other one integrates repeatedly. So 
When we do a tap method, what we want to do is we want to set um, x squared is the one that will differentiate to 0, and e to the x integrates repeatedly. So we start with x squared, and then we differentiate that, and we differentiate it again, and the last differentiation will give us 0. Then we take e to the x, and we integrate that. Remember, we're integrating. I know it doesn't matter with e to the x, but we are integrating. Then on the right, we change our signs. The first one's positive, the second one's negative, and they alternate signs. And then it's just a matter of multiplying diagonally. Okay, so that's it, and that's, but this only works, this is a nice cool method, it's quick to use, but it only works if x squares, different, if that term differentiates to zero. Let's try another example. So once again, x cubed will differentiate to zero, sine x integrates easily, So we're going to start with x cubed and differentiate it until we get to 0. Then we're going to take sine x, and remember we're integrating sine x, not differentiating, but integrating sine x. We alternate our, we alternate our signs on the left. And then we multiply diagonally. And that's our answer. It's a nice little tip that we can only use when one of the terms differentiates to zero and the other one is easy to um, integrate. I think you sort of have the hand on that. I want you to try these and then you can ask questions tomorrow when you come in. Well, actually, let's do this one right quick because I like this one because of the negative 2x. Okay, so we start with x cubed. Then we differentiate that, we get 3x squared, we get 6x, we get 6, and then we get 0. That's plus, minus, plus, minus. We start off with e to the negative 2x. Now, when we integrate that, remember we have to use u substitution. So u is equal to negative 2x, du is equal to negative 2dx, so then dividing by that, we get 1 half, negative 1 half du is equal to dx. So this becomes negative 1 half e to the negative 2x. Integrating again, this becomes negative 1, uh, actually be positive, or so it's negative, this would be positive 1 fourth e to the negative 2x. And then the last one would, um, then again it would be, negative 1 eighth e to the negative 2x and then integrating again it would be uh, positive 1 16th e to the negative 2x okay so you have to remember to use your substitution there and then we multiply those together we get um, negative 1 half x cubed e to the negative 2x uh, minus 3 fourths x squared e to the negative 2x. And the next one is going to be negative again, negative 6 eighths. And of course, you can simplify that e to the negative 2x. And then negative 6 over 16 e to the negative 2x. All of that plus c. Notice that they're all negative. But that's the way you would do that. Okay, so here's what I want you to remember is that you always want to um, do, try the simplest solution first. So these are some questions you can ask yourself as you integrate. Is it a basic rule? Can you use power or trig or inverse trig to, to integrate? Try that first. 
If that's not the case, can you simplify it? Try using algebra or trig. Um, try multiplying or dividing. Try using a Pythagorean identity. If none of that works, then you want to try use substitution. Remember, du has to be in the original integrand. If all else fails, that's when you want to use integration by parts. I can't tell you how many times kids have come to me trying to use integration by parts when they could have either used a um, use substitution or simplified in some manner. So you always want to try that first and then try integration by parts. Kids who have had me in the past, you know my saying, think horses, not zebras. And then we added that last year, no unicorns. And unicorns is just fictional math that you guys make up. So none of that. So think horses, not zebras, guys. This is your homework assignment. Um, it's just, it's not that many problems in the book. We have a quiz tomorrow on basic integration. If you want to, if you want to study for that, I would look over the assessment that you had online because your questions are going to be very similar to that. After this uh, basic integration tomorrow in class, we will practice more integration by parts in class as well. All right, it's going to be a great semester and uh, I'm looking forward to working with you. I will see you tomorrow in class.